All right, so we're back with Monaco again. Um, here's where we are. It's a little different, as you can see. What happened is, as pissed off and frustrated as I was with my airbrush, I can't justify just tossing and buying a new one, or I'm too lazy to get the proper fittings and everything I need to make the Aztec I have work, not to mention figure out how to use it. So I went online, and I was able to order more parts, new parts for my for my Badger. And what I got is the pin and valve assembly here um, that connects down here. Um, over the years of being washed and cleaned, and I just figured maybe the, the um, O-ring in here maybe was bad or going bad, the pin wearing out, stuff like that, so I decided to replace it. It wasn't expensive. I forget what it was. Eight dollars, maybe. I can't remember. And then the other thing I replaced is the cone right here. This cone here. This is the medium size. Okay, it comes in three sizes. You get a a larger broadcast. You get the medium, and then you get a fine one for for fine lines. So what I've noticed over time is the needle has been sticking out even farther through the cone. So I figured that might be the issue. So I bought a new one of these. And both parts came in recently, so I decided, okay, let's try to give this a shot again. So what happened was, first off, um, to I painted the nose clip from what I'm gathering from my great investigative um, observations and stuff like that, um, that the front end of the clip of the car in the show was all black without any um, grills and everything in it. So my impression is that it, it looks like it's a new part. So I'm going to guess the car was in a collision and um, this was replaced. So they put it on there and they, and they left it primered or the, the standard color came from the factory. So that that's, was black. So I painted that flat black. To get that, I taped off around, including the new panel lines I told you about that I, I scratched out because there weren't any. Wrapped that up in tape, sprayed it, huzzah, was happy, took the tape off, and it peeled the paint off, of course. So, lots of colorful superlatives were used, um, and since this is a custom color, uh, custom mix, the chances of me being able to make another batch and just touch up this one area... Um, not very likely that'll match, so I decided to make a whole new batch. Sanded the car down, um, reshot it, because my parts came in from my airbrush, so that's cool. Um, and wouldn't you know, the airbrush really shot no better. Very, very disappointed with that. Got new parts and everything, it's like a new airbrush really, but it still spits and spattles when it's spraying, so I, I have to figure that out. But anyway, I got the color on finally let it dry and then um then 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 we masked off the front fender very carefully because i was afraid to get the um to have the tape pull the paint off again and um, we spray painted that with charcoal um just a where is it here it is craft acrylic okay charcoal this is a lighter acrylic uh crap uh a lighter charcoal than I usually do for the undersides of the cars. Um, still called charcoal, not light charcoal or anything. I just called charcoal, but this brand it's lighter than the other one. So, so we use that to spray the primer here. We masked off the trunk. We sprayed that, and then the other bits and pieces like around here, around here, around here, and the hood. We just did that by hand. And I was happy with that. It actually came out pretty good. It's not a perfect coat. It's a little blotchy over here on the on the fender, which is fine. Um, I can think it adds to the uh, to the look of the car because it's you know it's, again it's not new. It's patched work. And then for whatever reason, on the fender here, it's got a darker primer on it also. So I did that with by hand with some um, some of my regular charcoal. That one's from Delta. Um, Delta Ceramics, right? Or Delta Creative. Um, this is the one that I, my go-to charcoal. This is the one I use for that. Then the door. We 
masked off and wanted to do the door. Um, turns out, um, when I had taped this off originally, I taped it off before I even primed the car for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why, so when I pulled the tape off after doing all the other work, it was bare plastic. And in the past, I've had issues with the craft acrylic sticking to the bare plastic. So what I was going to do, I took the color that I chose, which is a Americana Golden Straw. Um, not too bright, I like that idea. Um, I watered it down a lot. My goal was to just put a small little layer of paint on here, get it to adhere, so when I went back and spray painted it, it would have something to stick to. Lo and behold, um, it stuck fine when I brush painted it, and it came out looking pretty good. Again, not perfect, but it has that worn out look. So I did like three coats of a watery mix of the um, golden straw, and this is what we're left with. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to bother taping off because, again, I'm afraid to, to pull everything off, so I'm just going to leave it. It's 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 okay. Um, next, I have to figure out what I'm going to do for the trim work. I haven't decided if I'm going to just um, paint it, paint the trim, or I'm going to bare metal foil it. Um, to foil or not to foil, that is a question. Um, I'll decide that in a, in a little bit. And then once that's decided and done, actually, then I'll give it a whole coat of dull dull coat and we'll be done with the body I think I'll, well, I'll have to paint the marker lights too but then it'll be done so all right be right back hey guys welcome back to the final for the Dodge Monaco as seen in the TV series Hunter um, yeah that's it it was a simple kit um, finished up before you knew it just kind of got away from me um, not the greatest kit in the world, I'll say that much for it. A um, lot to be desired of it, but I kind of knew that going into it. But overall, the results in the end are kind of cool. I'm happy with it. Um, I'm sure you put it in the, the, uh, on the shelf there, and people will see it. If they've, if they've seen the show, they're going to know what it's from. So I'm pretty happy with it. So, um, What can I say more about this... Um, you know, um, yeah, pretty much that's it. Uh, the, the I wasn't pleased at the way, like, when you put the interior bucket into it and it just kind of floated around. Um, even the chassis, when you put the chassis onto the body, it just kind of floated until you, it didn't have, like, a spot where it locked in. Um, so I was kind of disappointed with that. But we, we figured it out and we got it in place. Had to use a bunch of glue to... Uh, to get it to lock in place there um, the light I stole from uh, Starsky and Hutch Torino which I screwed up um, about a year or so ago so um, that car will be ended up being rebuilt as a regular Torino of some kind um, not a police car not the zebra zebra one or whatever the hell they called it um, because I, the decals are on it and it got screwed up so I decided why not use the, the red light. It's perfect for this car. Um, to make the antenna, or the, the wire going into the car, I took some fuse wire, wrapped it around a pin, um, really tight, keep, kept it nice and tight, wired it, put it in, and glued it, and she looks pretty good. Um, I said we um, made the front look like it's new, new components without the grill, so you could see through into the um, radiator wall see the radiator there and everything is pretty cool um, we put the um, primer everywhere it was on the car the antenna is bent over like it was on the show um, some scenes of the car you saw it had four hubcaps others it had no hubcaps I decided to go two and two uh, two with and two without just to add some depth and and points of interest to it, make it a little st stand out a little bit more. But yeah, that's about it. <clears throat> um, the underside is one of those one-piece jobbers. Nothing special there. Okay, we just made it dusty and dirty. Um, not um, not overly done, I don't think, but just enough to make it look worn. Uh, the engine compartment. I did something a little different with the engine compartment. 
go. You can see that. Zoom in a little bit. There you go. So I tried to make it look full. You know, if you look at these old 70s cars, the, the engine compartments were just, it, the engine was dwarfed and surrounded, almost drowning in some cases with hoses and cables and wires and whatnot. So that's what I wanted to do here. So um, for one of the first times, I added battery cables. I added uh, heater hoses and all kinds of other hoses that I could find, uh, overflow hoses. The radiator overflow hose was installed. All that stuff. Um, you can see. Hang on. Ow, ow, ow. You can see here we added uh, the extra supports from the end, you know, inside the engine compartment there that the original car had. This kit didn't have it, it just added some styrene. And then we griminded it up, we rusted it up, dusted it up, and all those good things. Okay, uh, we weren't going for perfect accuracy. We we're just going on enough to make it look busy. You know, that's about it. All right, so that's that. Oh, another thing that was a problem with the car is when it was built, and I put the hood on, the hood didn't fit right, and it would rock back and forth. And it was driving me nuts to figure out why it was. It turns out this piece here it actually crested to a point right here. So what I ended up doing is taking my Dremel, ground it down till, till it's flat, and then when I put the hood back on, it fit like a dream, like it's supposed to. So just something for you guys to watch when you uh, come across this kit in your own. Um, we also did the underside. We painted it, uh, dirtied it up, grimed it up. So that is our Dodge Monaco Hunter style. So he'll be cruising the streets of LA now, catching the bad guys, catching the rapists with his partner, Dee Dee McCall. Good times. Anyway, that's it. It was a short build, quick build, but it was a fun build. And it was a different build, I think. You don't see a lot of these cars out there, so I thought it was cool. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I will put some... Uh, Glamour shots at the end of this video, so you can check them out a little better than my video camera, which kind of sucks hard. Um, give you a better look at the car. Um, but anyway, until next time, guys, be strong. for me.